Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in today. We did last week part one of the difference between temptation and manifestation. This is part two. Now, last week you learned how temptation and manifestation can look a lot alike. With well, this week, you're going to learn more truths that will help you see the difference. Luke chapter four is a phenomenal powerful chapter in the Bible. Call a friend, tell them to turn that television on and get a pencil and paper and take some notes because so many people have been failed. I mean, have failed in life because they didn't know the difference between a temptation or a manifestation. So this is part two of it. Be blessed because I'm telling you, you're going to learn something today and you won't be caught no more by the devil. Are you ready? Are you ready to receive from God? Watch this and be blessed. Write this down. Man cannot be happy without speech. Oh, I love what they said, Billy. Beware of the art of conversation, though. Satan knows how to talk. And he waits till you're discontented and hungry. How I many of you have been believing God a long time for something? Oh, you hand up. Most people say faith and patience you inherit. That's right. Let patience have its perfect work that you're perfect and entire. That's in the book of James. Wanting nothing. Patience will get you what you want, not need, if you let it develop you. No, you know, you can learn more from a mistake than you can from a, a blessing. Because sometimes people know, don't know how to handle the blessing. And if you learn from the mistake never to do it again, it'll give you great wisdom. And, there, and you can see even the patriarch, made, Abraham made a mistake. He made a mistake over Ishmael. We got that problem today. Yes. See, the problem never goes away because Satan uses it, not for just one generation. He's not interested in just touching one person. He wants to get them all. Yes. So write this down. Never invite death to rock the cradle of spiritual life. You never invite death to rock the cradle of spiritual life. Because you see, Satan never misses church in the book of Revelation chapter two, I believe it's verse 13, that, that he said to the church at Pergamos, he, this Satan has a seat in the church. He's sitting in the church. Now, I, I, now don't misunderstand. J Satan will not put baseball or football over church service. And nothing wrong with going to football's game. Of, I'm not talking, I mean, he will not do it because it just takes one word a rhema, and it destroys him. So he causes confusion. But he does it with things you like. Notice how he twists his things. It's no longer gambling in Vegas. It's gaming. It's no longer adultery. It's an affair. Remember the, the movie Affair to Remember? Notice that. He's twisting that. Or we call it today, spinning it. Notice how he changes those things. Because see, everything he does is very sensual, very fleshy. Yes. He'll make a man that got gray hair on his chest, make him think he still got the stuff. <laughs> man, you need to talk to your wife. She'll tell you. She'll say, you ain't got the stuff no more, boy. <laughs> but to that crazy man, oh, I tell you what, boy, I still got it. That's all I'm going to say about that. But anyway, <laughs> you never invite death to rock the cradle of spiritual life. Why would a church invite Satan to sit in it? There are churches now that you can go to and there are, we have, a lot of times we have cafes and cappuccino. Now they serve wine and beer and liquor. Let me help those people that believe that's okay to drink. <laughs> you, you know what the government calls it? Spirits. They tax it. Do you know what they call it? Sin tax. And you call it Jack Daniel, black label. Johnny Walker Red. CC and Seven. Canadian Club. You know all that? Drank every bit of it. 151 Puerto Rican rum. Bacardi Light. Ooh, PCP. Crystal meth. Heroin. Cocaine. Snorted through a hundred dollar bill up your nose. Whoa! Isn't it amazing I'm still alive? <laughs> Everything I said, I did. And the devil made me think I was having fun. Because it was sensual. 
I had invited death to rock my cradle. Thank God for the mercy of God, a praying mama and a praying wife. I wouldn't be here. You see what I'm saying? But it's so tempting. But it's what you want. Ah, write this down. Don't bargain with Satan. If you do, you're gratifying ambition at the cheapest rate. Don't bargain with Satan. If you do, you are gratifying ambition at the cheapest rate. A worldly mind will welcome it. See, a worldly mind will tell you that the Bible is hate speech. Why are we having so much trouble? I heard uh, one of those guys on Fox that, uh, I can't call his name, but he was the head person there. He said, because people no longer believing in God anymore. Look what we got. Look what we have today. And the church, God gave the church an opportunity on 9-11. My God, man. People went to church after uh, they were attacked there in Manhattan. And what did the church do? The same stupid thing they did. They gave no life, no nothing, and people quit within two to three weeks. Isn't that amazing? We had an opportunity. I was asked to speak at the Senate in uh, the state of Louisiana. Remember that, Kathy? Right after Hurricane Katrina. Oh, all the world was focused on Katrina. So the Senate there in the state of Louisiana asked me to come and speak a word. Not enough, so I thought, man, that's hard. Why would they want me, you know? But I went, because Kathy told me to go. <laughs> I, I'm not political at all. I tell you if I like you or I don't like you, now, you know, I, 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 I do that at the voting box, at the ballot box. I want to know what you believe in and you know, what's your agenda and what's your platform and blah, 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 this and that. Make a long story short, I went up there and, and the, so the senator, or the, uh, the head of the Senate, he says, now, he said, Reverend DePlantis, they're they going to be listening to everything you say, but they're very noisy and loud. They got all their, got all their uh, computers on. He says, so don't be offended by that. Every speaker, you just have to speak over, the, over all the hollering. And talking. I said, okay. So I walked up and I said, hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Reverend Jester DePlantis and I've been invited to speak to you. And, uh, and while they're still talking, I said, and I've come to pray. When I said pray, the whole place went stone cold silent. They turned around and looked. The, sent, the head of the president of the Senate went, I mean, qu- nobody say a word. I said, what? From all kind of bosh. And I said, the eyes of the world are on us and on the state of Louisiana because of Hurricane Katrina. We have an opportunity to be a blessing to those that have been tragically hurt. We have an opportunity to show people how we can turn tragedy into a blessing. We can, how people who are helping us show and show them the results of what the great state of Louisiana will do because they open up their hearts. They open up the Astrodome there in Houston so people could have a place to go because New Orleans was flooded out. You could, not, you could hear a pin drop. And then I prayed for them and they all bowed their heads. And I said, thank you for this great opportunity. Don't let it go by, because God opened it up for this great state. And I walked away, and that senator says, can I take a picture with you? <laughs> he said, my God. He said, would you like to help me on my comp- campaign? I said, no. <laughs> I said, I'm not really political. I said, well, I just came here to pray. And he said, my God. He said, I've been here, tw- was it 28 years, something like that? He said, and it's never been silent. And guess what? There's a billion dollars that was given. Nobody knows where it's at. <laughs> Trying to find it. And I had wonderful pastors, great pastors that sent $100,000 donations. They said, if you wanted to get to the people, you sent it to Jesse the Planets. And I told my staff and I told my finance about, we will not keep $1 of this. I want records that the, that money comes in to the people that use it. And my God, we gave away $3 million to help people all over the state of Louisiana that were flooded out. Am I right, Kathy? It was amazing. Never, never kept my, You know, one preacher told me, he said, man, I ain't get that money. He said, man, I built me another building. I never could haul a razor, so I just took it. That's fraud. What's his name? I can't tell you that. That has to do with the United States government. That's none of my business. So you don't bargain with Satan. If you do, you're gratifying ambition at the cheapest rate. See, a worldly mind will welcome it. But if you are full of the Holy Ghost, you will know the difference between the appetite of evil and the appetite of goodness. 
See, if you follow the Holy Ghost, you'll know the difference between the appetite of evil and the appetite of goodness. Go with me to the book of Romans chapter 12. The you know, book of Romans chapter 12. I want you to see this here. You got to know the difference between the appetite of evil. Notice that. And the appetite of goodness. Romans chapter 12. I believe it's verse ooh, 21. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. What we did was we took the evil of Katrina and we overcame it with good. Yes, yes. One, of the, one of the greatest things ever happened to me, Jerry, this man walked in with his seven-year-old daughter and she was real small, seven-year-old Kelly, real little. They came in and he said, but he said, but Jesse, he said, man, I, he said, I've lost my house. Uh, he said, my house is flooded out and everything. He said, now, see, you got to understand, not only did people lose their houses, they lost their jobs. It was 60,000 businesses destroyed within an hour and a half. All the banks were destroyed. The credit card grid, you couldn't use anything. Only thing that worked was a gun and cash. I'm telling you, it kill you for five cents, buddy. When you've been on top of an of a overpass at 95 degrees and 100% humidity with no water, no food for days, you'll kill somebody. So he came in and what me and Kathy had, we listened to the Lord and before Katrina hit, we rented as many apartments, condos, you know, out of New Orleans because we knew people would need some help. And, and none of our ministry, was nothing was hurt in our ministry. So our, our ministry became a staging thing. So Kathy opened up Covenant Compassion Center so we could help people. I mean, it was amazing what was going on. So this man come in, I said, listen. I said, I got a place for you to stay. What? What? I said, I got a place. I said, how many in your family? He said, well, I got three kids and my wife. Meanwhile, he said, I, I, he said, I, I, he, said you, he said, what's it gonna cost me? I said, not a thing. I said, how about six months for free? And if you need more, just let me know. He said, are you serious? I said, yes, sir. He said, but I don't have no furniture. I said, I cut a deal with a furniture guy and he, told, he, he gave me a great deal. So I, I said, all brand new furniture's in it. So they went, the little girl grabbed my leg. Oh, it touched me when I think about that. She said, daddy, I told you Jesus and brother Jesse would help us. <laughs> oh, I tell you, heart out, you know what I'm saying? Oh, Lord. You remember that? I, I didn't know what to say. I said, sweetheart, everything gonna be all right. I said, take six months. You need more, I'll give you more than that. I'll take care of everything. Watch this. What I was doing, I was making people aware. I had an opportunity to do good, to overcome evil. Jesus had an opportunity. He overcame Satan. The thing that he wanted was the world and Satan showed it to him, but he overcame it with the goodness of who Jesus was. Do you know that man was back in my office in two and a half months? He said, Brother Jesse, I pulled all the drywall out. He said, now we don't have no carpets on the floor, it's a slab. He said, but that's all right, we're gonna move into our house. Mm -hmm. I said, well, you got any furniture? Well, no, I don't have any. I said, well, take the furniture you got. He said, what? I said, the furniture in the apartment is yours. Oh, we can't do that, but that's all brand new furniture. I said, I got a deal with it. He said, yeah. That, I said, He'll, I'll buy some more and put it in there. And that little girl said, I told you he's a good man, that brother Jesse. <laughs> because you see, the first thing you got to do if you want to get things to go to normal is get the schools up. If you get the schools up, when kids start going back to school, things begin to return normal. And people were promised everything and were ripped off in the process of that. You see what I'm saying? So you never invite death to rock the cradle of spiritual life. Write this down. Know the difference between believing, and I said this last night, uh, yesterday, believing in God and believing God. I told the people yesterday, I said, a man asked me, he said, do you believe in God? I said, no, I don't believe in God at all. Freaked him out. What? I said, I don't believe in God at all. I said, the devil believes in God and trembles. I said, some people believe in God and don't tremble. I don't believe in God. I believe God. There's a vast difference between believing God and believing in God. The devil believes in God, but you certainly don't want to be him. But when you believe God, you do not separate God from his word. And you'll know the difference between a temptation and a manifestation. Yes. So that you won't make those mistakes, you see. You don't want to make mistakes because it takes a long time to recover after mistakes. And also maybe a lot of money and things of that nature. You see, I, I, I told people this and I'll say it again. I don't let doctors tell me, make me confess something I don't want. And I know what they're trying to do. They, 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 they're interested in genetics. And I understand genetics. I'm, I'm not dumb, man. I understand that. Well, do, do, do you have cancer in your family? Knob. I just said, what does knob mean? None of your business. 
You've heard me say that. I said that the other day. I ain't going to confess cancer, diabetes. I don't care if it follows my family. I'm not going to do that. I will not do that. Now, you can do what you want to do, but something that's so minor can cause something to come upon you because you start telling people what might happen instead of telling them what the Lord said. Ooh. See, a manifestation is gained not by power, but by love. You see what Satan said, all shall be thine is good speech, but beware of the small words and the small print. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to know what's the real, read the small print. Jesus read through the lines of Satan, and you can too. Listen, if it looks good, but there's just a little evil in it, don't fall for it, because that'll stop your destiny and stop you from reaching your destination. Let me tell you something, a little evil, brother, is bad. It's very, very bad. I had a man tell me one time that three drops of crude oil in 55 gallons of water will destroy the water. It will pollute it. Well, I'm going to tell you, it don't take much sin to pollute something. One of the most important things to remember is this. There are no short roads to manifestation. Let me say that again. There are no short roads to manifestation. If it's a small price, ladies and gentlemen, it's a big lie. Jesus paid a very big price so all of us could go to heaven. And I mean that sincerely. So in other words, if it's easy, <laughs> look around, something's wrong. So what's the key to seeing all this? Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost and you being full of the Holy Ghost and remain full of the Holy Ghost. Now, how do you do that? Going to church, reaching out to God and God reaching out to you. Are you tired and hungry for God to answer you? I believe you can probably say yes. The Bible says, let patience have a perfect work. That's James chapter one, verses four. Why? Perfect and entire, wanting nothing. They didn't say need nothing, wanting nothing. Man, these, these answers to these complicated problems are very simple in life. So don't complicate them. Can I pray for you right now? Father, in the name of Jesus, I come boldly to the throne of grace with this petition and supplication, su supplication with thanksgiving. Lord, I can't thank you enough for these wonderful people. But Lord, I ask you to bless them spiritually, physically, financially. You see what they're going through. Let them go through it. Bless God and come out on the other side victorious. Satan, I get great pleasure in telling you, get under these people's feet right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I get excited praying for you. I want to start preaching when I'm praying. I got to watch myself. I can't help it because prayer does work. Partners, I want to say thank you for all that you do for this ministry financially. Your faithful financial support is so vitally important. And I hope you know that Kathy and I pray for you every day. There's not a day goes by that we don't pray for you. You are the backbone of this ministry. And we believe God is going to manifest your everything as he promised in John chapter 14, verses 13 and 14. Your everything is his anything. I love that scripture. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. Why? That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. That's Jesus talking. You're going to hear me say that verse a lot. I believe I'm going to say it all the rest of my life. So bless God, you don't have time for discontentment. All you have to do is say, God's word's real, I'm real, and I've read the small print. Notice it. All the key things are in the small print. You ever notice that? <laughs> if you want to watch, <laughs> watch a commercial, you'll see that little small print come up, and then it'll go down. Why? Because that's what's going on right there. Not all this big stuff. That's what Satan was trying to do Jesus, you see. He was trying to get him to look at the Roman Empire, the Persian Empire, my God, the Chinese Empire. Listen, man, you came for, get all these people. All you got to do is bow down and worship me once. See, that's just a little leap, once. You don't have to do it again. And besides, we're out in the wilderness. Ain't nobody going to know. You see that? That's all in the small print, ladies and gentlemen. Watch that word, if. I'm telling you, because that's a, that's a satanic word. <laughs> I won't let you know that. I mean that sincerely. Partners, thank you once again. I just can't say thank you enough. Because, you know, when you send in, let me just say this. When you send in your faithful financial support, we don't think of that as money. We think of that as souls into the kingdom, bodies being healed, people coming out of depression, people coming out of recession, people coming out of everything Satan's trying to do to shut them down. That's what your faithful finances does through this ministry. Well, you know, you've heard me say it many times. We're totally debt free. We owe nobody nothing but to love them. So we're able to bring great joy. When we go in, I've had, I had a pastor tell me this the other day I was preaching. How can you come here and not charge me nothing? Well, the Lord didn't ask me to pay for it. 
He asked me to believe for it. Now, you see, receiving an offering is not a problem, but I do not charge anyone any expenses, even when I go overseas. I don't care what the world says. Now, I know nobody thinks like that, and I'm not bragging on myself, but I made up my mind that my God shall supply, and he does. You see? And so I, I don't get discontented because his word is greater than anything I can see. Thank you for helping this ministry. Nothing too small and nothing too big. Kathy's coming right now with some glorious moments. My God, I love this segment Woo! because it just blesses God. It blesses me. It blesses Kathy. And I know it's going to bless you. Watch this and be blessed. Thank you for watching Glorious Moments. These are testimonies from people that have been blessed by God through our ministry. This first one was posted on Facebook. It says, I was at the 2019 Southwest Believers Convention on Wednesday night when Jesse gave an altar call for those addicted to pornography. One to 200 men and women came forward. As a former addict, I stretched out my hands with the rest of the congregation and prayed for these people trapped in the prison of porn. I then became overwhelmed with thanksgiving for the Lord's deliverance and presence in my life. Later that night on the way home, I was overcome by the Holy Spirit and for the first time in my life received the gift of tongues. My wife videoed the entire progression this was the craziest, most unexplainable spiritual experience of my life. God is amazing. I love that. You know, and this next testimony is from Alabama, and it'll bless you. It says, Brother Jesse, my husband and I came to your visionary conference, and as a surprise to our son, we brought him along. Since he was a small child, you were one of the only ministers that could keep his attention. I homeschooled him from the third grade until he graduated in May of 2018. When he was in the eighth grade, he was learning to write business letters. He chose to write a letter to you. In your reply to him, you requested that he mail you a picture to put on your prayer board. He sent it right away. He is now in his second semester of college as a music industry major. Thank you for being such a positive influence in his life for all of these years. I love that. You know, God is so good. And sharing testimonies are a great way to give thanks to our wonderful God for the great things that he is doing. First Chronicles 16 and 8 says, give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. I hope you can share your testimony with someone today. What made Jesus know the difference between a temptation and a manifestation? There's a vast difference between believing God and believing in God. It took some time. It took some discipline. It took some dedication. It took some commitment. There's no short roads to manifestation. The difference between temptation and manifestation. Available for your November partnership of $50 or more. Visit JDM.org for more information. There's a world that needs to be saved. Our mission is to preach the gospel of Jesus to that world. That is why we here at Jesse the Planet's Ministries believe the unbelievable and operate in the impossible. God is continuing to direct us to expand our outreach to more people in more places and through more ways than ever before. We are advancing into the frontiers of ministry to change more lives through one simple question. Do you know Jesus. Listen to me, it is beginning. The light of Jesus is shining higher and brighter and further than ever. People from all over are responding to the message of Jesus. Nothing can stop the light of God's love from reaching people and changing lives.
Ladies and gentlemen, God's vision for JDM is manifesting more than ever. As dark as this world gets, and boy, it's getting dark, isn't it? God's light is shining brighter and further through, number one, our television program. People love that. Our JDM.org. Boy, they go to that website. They enjoy that. Social media. Man, isn't that a wonderful thing? My people watch us all the time. Our Voice of the Covenant magazine. The reason why we named it, I had someone tell me one time, when I read your magazine, it was like a voice. We thought, let's call it the Voice of the Covenant. Our ministry products, people getting our CDs, our books, DVD, all, and so much more. So many things. People are, number one, being saved, delivered, healed, and they're reaching their destiny in Christ. We bring joy everywhere we go, ladies and gentlemen. I tell you, you're not going to be sad in one of my, in one of my meetings. Uh-uh. I'm going I'm to knock the sad, sadness out of here and put some great joy in you. You know, God took 70 parts of Moses' the spirit and put it on 70 elders, and he still had enough left to whip the devil. I really believe right now God's taking a portion of my joy and placing it on you. And guess what? You better get ready to be blessed spiritually, physically, and financially. The anointing of increase is on me in the financial area and in every area of my life. I don't mean that to be arrogant or cocky. It just is the truth. Why? Because I know the difference between temptation and manifestation, and I stay full of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. I'm enjoying myself. Partners, once again, thank you for helping me. We've got some great projects we need to do, and your faithful financial support is so vitally important to getting all these things done. And I'm not asking you to give to this ministry without me and Kathy giving to it, too. We believe in that. I never ask anybody to do something I'm not willing to do myself. And I thank you for it. Thank you for watching. Don't miss next week's great show, a sermon called God's Greatest Promise to His Children. See you. Bye-bye. In the November issue of Voice of the Covenant magazine, Jesse teaches on the difference between truth and fact. Kathy teaches you the truth about healing. You'll be encouraged with Glorious Moments praise reports. View our TV and meeting schedule and much more. Voice of the Covenant magazine, available in your mailbox and on the free JDM app. Get your copy today. If it's God's desire that all your family come to the knowledge of God, then it must become your desire. That's something you need to work on. Because I'll be honest with you, there's some people in my family, I, if they didn't come to heaven, it'd be okay. I don't mean that to be rude, but I mean, I'm just talking flesh here. I'm talking about, you know, because everybody got somebody in your family. You know. You know.